We're looking at practice exercises from page 258 and 259 of the textbook. This time, instead of ranking atomic radii, we are ranking ionic radii, so the radii of ions. But we're going to start these problems the same way we normally would. We want to find all of the atoms in the periodic table. So you can see for this first question, we're looking at the sulfur anion, the neutral sulfur atom, and the oxygen anion. So if I find those on the periodic table, I can see that oxygen is here and sulfur is here. So just based on their locations in the periodic table, I know that oxygen is going to be smaller because oxygen is using less energy levels. Oxygen's in the second period as opposed to sulfur, which is in the third. So oxygen is only up to its second energy level. So oxygen is definitely going to be the smallest. Even though it's an ion, that doesn't really make a difference now. It's going to be the smallest. So now I need to worry about which one is larger neutral sulfur or the sulfur anion. So you need to ask yourselves, how did sulfur get to be negatively charged? Well, sulfur got that two negative charge by adding electrons, and when electrons are added, that is going to increase the atomic radii, because those electrons are going to take up space in that electron cloud, and that electron cloud is really what we measure when we're looking at the radii of an atom or an ion. So because of that, sulfur, the neutral atom, is going to be the next largest, and then the very largest is going to be our charged sulfur anion. Okay, let's look at the second set. Now they're telling us in this set that we have what's called an isoelectronic series. In an isoelectronic series, they all have the same number of electrons. So let's try to figure out how many protons and how many electrons we have in each of these things. So again, we're going to use the periodic table to help us out. So first one we want to find is Rb. So if we take a look on the periodic table, that's Rb, which means that it has 37 protons. And if it has a positive one charge, that means that it must have lost one of its electrons, so it's going to have 36 electrons. The next one we're going to look for is strontium, and strontium is right next to it. So strontium has 38 protons. And since it has a two positive charge, that means that it must have lost two electrons, so it's down to 36 electrons. That makes sense. We're supposed to have an electronic series, so they should all have the same number of electrons. The last one is yttrium, which again we can see is right next to strontium. So yttrium has 39 protons, and to get that three positive charge, it must have lost three electrons, so it also has 36 electrons. So we do have an electronic series because they all have the same number of electrons. So what makes them different is the number of protons. Now when we're ranking ions, we really want to think about what is going on in terms of the pull between the protons and the electrons. In this case, since they all have the same number of electrons, that means they've got the same amount of core electrons, so we can really just focus on what the protons in the nucleus are doing to those electrons. So the positively charged protons are pulling those negatively charged electrons. The more protons an ion has, the more tightly it can pull those electrons in. So the one with the most protons is yttrium. So because this one has the most protons, it is actually going to have the smallest radius. Again, more protons means more positive charge pulling on the same number of electrons. So by that reasoning, that means the one with the next smallest amount of protons, so the one with only 38 protons, is going to be the next largest and the very largest is going to be the one with the least protons, the least amount of positive charge pulling on the electrons. So notice that this is not what we would typically expect if we were ranking the neutral atoms. So when we rank ions, it's really important to think about what is going on with the numbers of protons and electrons. And the only reason we can think about it just in terms of protons and electrons is because we have an isoelectronic series. So this is a very special circumstance, so pay attention to the specific conditions you're dealing with when you rank these substances. That's not something we dealt with up here, talking about the protons and electrons, because we had a neutral atom we were trying to find, and we also were looking at things that were in two different periods. So pay attention to the circumstances of specific problems. You won't be able to solve all of these atomic radii or ionic radii problems in exactly the same way.